Nowadays, many of us are saving our files to the cloud using OneDrive Business or SharePoint Online. Unfortunately, getting data from these sites using Power Query is not so straightforward. So in this video, I'm going to step you through the three scenarios. Getting data from an individual file on OneDrive or SharePoint, getting data from a SharePoint folder, and getting data from a SharePoint shared library. Let's get started. We'll start with getting data from an individual file on OneDrive or SharePoint. Either way, the process is the same and it requires getting the file path, but not the file path as you know it. Now, if you're like me, you'll have your OneDrive files synced to your hard drive. You can see mine here in the File Explorer. And if I copy the path via the Home tab and then Copy Path, and then go to Notepad and I'll just Control V to paste it in, you can see the file is on my hard drive because it starts with C colon backslash. Now this is fine if you only ever want to use this query on your PC, but if you want to use this file on another PC or share it with other users, you'll want to get the OneDrive file path. Now to do that, we go to OneDrive for Business in our browser. So let me open that up. So here's the file I want to get. Now you'd think I can get the file path by right clicking and copy link. Let's do that. I'll close that and we'll go back to Notepad and let's paste in what it gives us. So it gives us this long link and it looks right, but I'm telling you now it's not the link you want. So the way that we get the link is to open this file in the app, the desktop Excel app. So here's the file open in Excel and then file tab info and I can copy the path here. So let's do that. We'll go back to Notepad. Let me paste it in to show you what it looks like. So you can see the link I get here is quite different to the link that you get if you right click the file in SharePoint. This is the link that I want. So with it copied to my clipboard, Control C. I'm going to close this file. I don't need it open. And then in a new Excel workbook, I'm going to get the data from the file saved on OneDrive for Business. So data and then from web. So it's counterintuitive. You think you're getting the data from SharePoint or OneDrive, which you are, but we use the web connector when we're connecting to just a single file. So I'm going to control V to paste in the file path. Now the bit at the end, question mark web equals one. I need to delete that. If you leave that in, you'll get an error. I'll click OK. Now it's asking me how I want to log in. And here I need to choose my organizational account and it's asking what level to apply the settings to. You can choose the root of the directory or you can choose a branch higher up. I'm going to leave it at that level for now. It says I'm not signed in, so I need to click sign in, choose my account, enter my password, and then sign in and click connect. And here's the file, there's only one sheet in it. You can see the data there all looks good. So I'm just going to go transform data because I only want to save this as a connection. And there you have the data. If we look at the source, you can see it's used Excel workbook web.contents to get the data. And then when I've clicked transform, it's added these steps to give me my final data set. So you can see it's fairly easy to connect to a single file on OneDrive for Business or SharePoint. You just need to make sure you get that file path by opening the file in Excel for the desktop and then you use get data from web. Let's close and load that. We'll just close and load it to a connection and we'll look at getting data from a SharePoint folder. So I'm going to use this folder here. You can see there are three workbooks in the folder. Now to connect to this folder, I can copy the first part of the file path from up here. I need everything up to layouts. So I can just select it, control C to copy. So with that copied to my clipboard, I can go back into Excel, got a new workbook here, we're going to start fresh. And here I want on the data tab, get data from file from SharePoint folder. And in here I paste in the site URL and click OK. Again, it's going to ask me to authenticate. So I'm going to use my Microsoft account. It's telling me I'm not signed in. So I'll sign in, choose my account, enter my password, and now I can connect. 
Now with this, you get a list of every file and folder on your SharePoint site. So here I need to transform the data so that I can filter out the files and folders that I don't need. I'll start by moving the folder path over to the left. Because the folder path can be quite long, I need more room to see it. So let's make it as wide as it will go. Now, if you're like me, you have way too many folders to sift through. So the best thing to do is filter the list with some of the folder path. So we go back to SharePoint. You can see my folder path is training, training content, syllabuses, moth, Excel, Power Query, lessons, practice files. So I could string together just a few of these to reduce the list. So I'll use Excel slash Power Query slash lessons slash practice files. So back in here, I want to filter text filters contains and then here I can enter the path. Now remember Power Query is case sensitive so you need to make sure you type this exactly as it appears in SharePoint. I'll click OK. Now if you have a lot of files and folders this could take a few minutes. OK that's a bit more manageable 79 rows and if we scroll down I think this is the folder that I want can't make the column any wider, but if I click on it, I can see the full path here. So that looks correct. So I'm going to right click text filters contains, and that's just going to filter my list down to just hopefully the three files that are in that folder. And there we are. So now I want to combine those three files, just like combining any other files from a folder. You click the combine files icon on the content column. If you just wanted one file, you could just click the binary there. That would give you just one. I want all three, so I'm going to Combine Files. At the Combine Files dialog, I need to choose which item in the file that I'm combining. So you can see there's a table and then a sheet called PQ2.05 underscore October. That will be probably the sheet that contains the table. Yes, looks the same. Sheet one, I think, is empty. and oct data is a named range. I'm going to go with the table and then click OK. Power Query now goes away, grabs the three tables from each file, consolidates them into one table ready for me to work with. So there we have the data and if we look at the month drop down you can see there's data in there for all three files. It's connected to my SharePoint folder so I can refresh this query and get updates as needed, for example, when new files are added. So let's close and load that one to connection only. And we'll look at the last example, which is getting data from shared libraries on SharePoint. If you work with shared libraries in SharePoint Online, then the process is a hybrid of the first and second examples. Here I'm in our My Online Training Hub team site you can see it's a shared library. Now I want to get the data from the example data folder here. Now there's two ways you can get the URL. One is to copy the domain from up here, but you need to remove the hyphen my before you use it. Or you can right click, open the file in the app, which is opening it in Excel on the desktop. And again, we go file, info, and you can copy the path. And if we take a look, I'll just paste that path into my notepad. You can see it's omitted the hyphen my that you can see in the browser. So this is the correct path. If you want just the file, then you need just this bit without the question mark web equals one. If you want the folder, then you want this section. So copying that, we'll go back to Excel and I'll close that. And in a new workbook, we'll go data, get data from file, from SharePoint folder. So again, it's still a SharePoint folder. Pasting in the URL, remember if you copy it from the team site, from the browser, you need to remove the hyphen dash my from the URL before using it. So there it is there without the hyphen dash my. I'll click OK. It's going to ask me how to connect. I want to use my Microsoft account, I'll sign in, choose my account, paste in my password, 
and connect. I don't have many files and folders in this site, it's just a demo site. Let's transform the data so I can filter out what I don't need. We'll move the folder path across so we can see it. We'll make it a bit wider. So there's my folder that I want. If I just want the one file, I can click on binary and drill down. So let's take a look at that. So here's a list of the items in that file. I've got a sheet called PQ underscore 2.05 November. I've got a sheet called sheet one and I've got a table called table one. If you click in the white space beside the table, you get a preview at the bottom of what's contained in that sheet. So you can see the tables there. This sheet is empty and this is also a table. Notice this table correctly displays the headers as headers, whereas this one, when we look at the sheet, has the headers underneath. So I want this table. I can click on it to drill down and now I have the table. So that's getting just one file from that folder. But if we want to delete these steps, we can go back and if I want all of the files in the folder, again, I can filter just to keep that folder. And then I can click on the double down arrow to combine all of the files in the folder. Works the same as the second example. We get a preview, looks correct. Click OK. And there's my data. If we check, we've got three files worth, three different months. So there you have the three ways to get data saved on OneDrive for Business or SharePoint. Just note that this won't work with OneDrive personal accounts. Now, if you want to share your files with other users, you just need to make sure they have permission to access the file, folder or shared library. So back in OneDrive or SharePoint, you can do that by going to the file, right clicking and share. Or if you want to share the folder, then you do that at the folder level, right click, share. And in here you can choose who can access the file so you can name them specifically. So for example, I can share my folder with Phil and that's going to allow him to open the Excel file that contains the query and refresh that query. Now, when Phil opens the file, he's going to need to set his logon credentials. He should get a warning below the ribbon in yellow that says he needs to log in and he can click the button to do so. You can also edit your credentials on the home tab of the ribbon in the query editor and then data source settings. And in here you select the source that you want to edit, click on edit permissions. And in here you can change the privacy level and edit. You can see here I'm currently signed in with my Microsoft account. Phil would need to choose sign in as a different user. It would sign me out and then he could choose his account and log in. So that's connecting Power Query to files saved on OneDrive for Business or on SharePoint or in SharePoint folders or even in SharePoint shared libraries. I hope you found these techniques useful. You can get the step-by-step -step written instructions at the link in the video description. Now I need to give a big thanks to fellow Microsoft MVP, Win Hopkins, who demystified connecting to SharePoint. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.